Whoa, we're back. The Javier Menes podcast. I had to jump back there. My face was too big, taking up the whole screen. So, Hav, uh, peaceful Sunday. I saw you out there spending some money at Starbucks. You usually go to McDonald's. But uh, what, Habib gave you some like uh, VIP American Express black version of uh, endless coffee? Is that what he gave? You? <laughs> no, he gave, he gave me a, a Starbucks uh, gift certificate. Uh, he had given it to me three weeks ago, and uh, the other day he had said, "Coach, you're using your 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 Starbucks gift certificate." I go, "Uh, because I was drinking McDonald's coffee." <laughs> goes, I go, "No, but I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use it." And then uh, I posted on Instagram recently, Umar. We're, we're training, right, for our first time training. We haven't trained in a little while, so we're getting ready for hopefully something soon. So I'm training Umar, and Umar calls me. He goes, Coach, you want something for Starbucks? I need coffee before I train. I go, what? I said, no, no, it's okay. I can't drink coffee at this late. So Umar shows up, and Abby gave him a, a, a Starbucks uh, coffee uh, uh, certificate also, so we're laughing that we're, we're eating at his expense, you know, which is is very common for him to give the whole team uh, gift certificates like that of one nature or another. He's always he's always done that. He's always done that. I remember the one time we were in Las Vegas, and uh, you know uh, he was giving out signatures. You know there was so much he got for doing the signature signing. He signed over a thousand or so cards and whatnot. Wow, he got, he got quite a bit of money and. Uh, I, as I'm walking back to my room, uh, Movlet comes and goes, here, coach. And I go, what's this? It's a thousand bucks. And I go, well, I, I don't, this is not my money. He goes, no, no, coach, Habib, Habib, Habib. Go, what do you mean, Habib, Habib? He goes, yeah, Habib, give you everybody thousand dollars. I go, he did? I said, oh, good, okay. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so Habib gave everybody a thousand bucks because he made some money. So he gave everybody, probably, honestly speaking, he gave half of what he made to all of us, all the fighters that were there. He gave us all a, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was a thousand a piece. He gave us all a thousand a piece. That's nice. That's that's nice. Habib. That's Habib. That's that's Habib. You got to understand. There's there's a lot of things this guy does, and and when a lot of people, if they ride him hard, they need to. They don't they don't know him because he's such a beautiful person. Uh, inside and outside, especially for his family and his fighters and his brothers, you know, brothers meaning fighters, you know, because we're all brothers to him. He's brothers to us. And uh, a lot of people just don't realize what kind of generosity he has and what kind of big heart he has. And uh, obviously he, he has his foundations he gives to, but outside of the foundations that he supports that you'll never know who they are because he doesn't want them to be public. I don't even know who they are, but I know he does. But he's a very giving person, you know. He, 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 you know. People have said to me, "What's changed with Habib with all that that power? And, and has anything changed?" And I go, "Yeah." And they go, "What do you mean?" Yeah. And I go, well, "Yeah, he got nicer. He's more generous because now he has more to give. So he's he's done exactly that. But but it's not like, you know, he's everybody's gonna text him and say, "Oh, I need this." No, he he has his foundations that he picks that he that he donates that you'll never know about but he does have that he's a very generous individual and he cares about people and you know you can't care about the whole world but he does have he does have quite a few that he takes care of I've, know, I've, just, heard of I've heard of some of the stuff i mean you know doing doing things help people in africa and different things yeah I've yeah he does different it. things another person that does that is dc yeah. He's a beautiful person like that, too. Yeah, I remember the one time, um, it was Christmas, you know, and DC had a, uh, when he was te teaching and wrestling, youth wrestling at my gym, he had those big old, a giant, giant, giant uh, 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 barrel for people to put in gifts for the underprivileged. And he comes in one day, he looks, he goes, he looks in the barrel, and it was like not even a quarter full. He goes, ha, huh, what the heck's going on here? I go, what do you mean? He goes, this thing's empty. I go, no, do you see people put something goes, no, 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 this thing's empty. You know what he does? He goes out. Uh, he had a Raptor at that time, right? He goes out in his Raptor. He comes back broke. He bought a, a, a truckload of toys. DC did. Truckload of toys. He comes in. He throws them all in, in, the, in, in, in the barrels. It was unbelievable. I go, wow, look at this guy. I go, DC, you know, I'm going to post this. He goes, no, 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 don't, Bob, don't. Please don't. I don't want people to know. I said, well, I don't care. <laughs> I don't think I posted it, but but I said, I don't care if 
you don't care if you don't want people to know. I want people to know because you're a beautiful human being and people don't need to understand there is people like you out there that care, you know, and obviously, you know, you can't take care of everybody and everybody thinks, you know, there's a lot of scammers out there, but there is people that are legit, but not everybody can take care of everybody, even the legit people. It's just, you know, whatever's in God's will to do yeah. will be done, you know, and um, uh, th that's just two stories of two unbelievable beautiful people that have golden hearts. That's DC and, and hubby. Now I, I, I know it. Cause you guys took me on that trip. Just made me flash back. I was thinking like, you know what a unique experience I had. I could tell a friend that nobody would believe me is, Oh, I was having burgers with Habib on the beach in Dubai. I was like, and it was just a regular cool guy, the best barbecue in the world. And you just look to your left and you're like, that's the world champion. I mean, that was a hell of an experience. A lot, of, a lot of that had to do with you, but that was very, very cool. Well, believe it or not, it's not just me because we have another guy who's, who's become a good friend. His name is Nick Lavar. Nick, Nick, Nick was a, a, a fan, just a huge fan, getting Nick signatures and this and that. And uh, I, brought, I brought Nick into the gym, and uh, Habib embraced him. Habib paid for his visit to Abu Dhabi, paid for his hotel, paid his food, paid for people to entertain him. And Habib still to this day takes care of Nick every so often. He'll do things especially for Nick. He'll, he'll, he'll get these rare cards, he'll sign them, and he'll give them to Nick. That's what he did with Abu Dhabi. He got these three rare cards that are uh, hardly out there, and he signed them, and he gave them to Nick. And right. that's what that's what Habib does. Things that 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 are so so kind hearted that I don't know of anybody that I know personally at that level. You know, people that are that big, I don't I don't know them to be kind like that. You know, Habib's one of a kind. You know, and so is so is, so is so is DC man. DC's pretty pretty generous individual. You know, and you know, and obviously me saying this probably <laughs> they're probably gonna look at me. Shut up, Bob. <laughs> we're not trying to like tell you to call up 1 800 Habib or 1 800 call 1 800 hotline 1 800 DC. No, DC, my car is broken. I okay, let's go, let's, go on, let's go on to the fights. Let's go on to <laughs> enough what about is, those guys. What did um, you think? What did you think about uh, this card? I, I, you know, didn't get a chance to catch it. You did. I, I was looking forward to this card because there was a few cards on there. The, the one fight with Michael Johnson. Uh, he was he was he was fighting on there, and I wanted to see his, his fight against uh, uh, Cesaris. Ah, man, I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name. Uh, he's a Brazilian kid. Uh, it was a really really good fight, and and uh, you know he they was going back and forth, back and forth. Uh, the Brazilian kid's coach was was really doing a good job, telling him exactly what to do, stay in the outside, blah blah blah, stay in the outside. Came up, came over with a straight right. It was either overhand or straight right. Laid out Michael Johnson. It was like wow. It was. I mean, it was very, very impressive, man. I was very impressed with that fight. And then after that fight uh, uh, came um, another fight that was very impressive too. That was that was uh, Diego Ferreira. Yeah, Diego Ferreira. Yeah, that was very impressive. Diego did a good job. Great cornering advice he got too. Great cornering advice. From his coach, uh, uh, I don't know his coach's name, but there was a great cornery. And then the, the next fight that came on was Andre Filao, who used to train with us uh, against uh, Buckley. You mm -hmm. know, and, and I expected, man, this is gonna be fireworks. These are two powerhouses. You know, these two guys gonna go for it. And sure enough, they went for it. Andre, for the first time, was very uh, selective. You know, and he was trying to mix up his kicks and punches together, but he was too stiff. And and the one thing that Andre uh, didn't do, and I'm just shocked as hell he doesn't use it, which I don't understand, is this guy can have takedowns like you wouldn't believe. There is nobody nobody that Andre Filao couldn't take down in MMA if he, if he wanted to take it down. Nobody. And mm -hmm. I am not joking. There is nobody he can't take down. I don't care. Heavyweight, whatever. This kid can take you down. And he's never used it. And I'm just kind of shocked that you have such a gift and you don't do it. And, and why? I'm going to tell you why. Hmm. When Andre used to spar with DC, DC would get in there with Andre. Of course, Andre can't strike with DC. So Andre would be on his bicycle doing this. But you know what, what Andre would do on more than one occasion? Double leg DC. Wow. Double leg DC. And I wow. look and I'm going, 
what the frick? And I tell DC, I go, DC, man, come on. Did you let him? He goes, no, Hob. The kids just got a really good double leg. So I didn't understand why Andre, who was able to take down not one time, but quite more than a one time, the times he sparred with the two-time great, you know, Hall of Famer, DC, who's the heavyweight, and you're fighting welterweight. Why the hell don't you use that kind of gift that you have? I never seen him do it once. And, 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 and this time around, I did see improvement from him. I saw some mm -hmm. really good improvement. He was mixing his hands and his feet together, and he stayed relaxed. He was too stiff, though. And if he would have just added uh, uh, the, the wrestling takedown element, he would have done great. Buckley did it. Buckley did it to him. Buckley fought a perfect fight. Yeah. And, and because he was mixing it up, he went down, he went up, he went punch, he went kick. Then Buckley hit him with the shin kick right to the neck. And then it was over. All she wrote, you know, beautiful shin kick. Andre was at really out. Buckley was being a gentleman. He didn't pounce on him. He knew that kick was over, and he kind of almost went in to finish it off because the ref might not have stopped it. When when Buckley saw the ref come in, he kind of laid off. So that was a very, very impressive fight. Uh, uh, the next one uh, was uh, Gudinas, a uh, girl from uh, Mexico that lived in in uh, in um, uh, Canada. I believe she, she migrated. Lupita. To, yeah, Lupita. She migrated to, to, to Texas. I mean, I'm sorry, Canada. Sorry, Canada. And she fights um, out of uh, the camp where uh, uh, the two girls, uh, uh, the one that's fighting for, for, for the title against um, Amanda Nunes. Lobo. And then the, yeah, yeah. And, Lobo and then, Jim Wolfkin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then the other girl is the former champ, that's the current champ that beat Val, uh, Valchenko. Uh, 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 Emily? Emily. Emily uh, no, not Emily. No, not Emily. Her name is, uh, God, why did you make me forget her name? It's not oh, Emily. I guess oh, Emily. That's who she fought. My bad. Go ahead. No, she, no, she, no, she fought uh, Belichenko. She didn't fight Emily. Oh, you're fighting the girl, this girl. Oh, oh Godinez. Godinez fought yeah, Emily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. E Emily Decody or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. That, that was a very good fight, you know. And, and Godinez um, is improving on her striking. She's using a lot of striking, but she didn't mix up her wrestling well. The other girl did her wrestling well, trying to mix it up, you know, did, did a good job of mixing up. That's a good little fight back and forth, you know, and then uh, then going to the main event, semi-main event, I'm sorry. And on that one there, that was a very entertaining fight. Uh, the first round was extremely competitive. And, and, and the, what do you call it, kid? He won uh, um, uh, Fluffy, Fluffy Hernandez. Anthony uh, Hernandez versus, against... Shabazian. Shabazian, yeah. yeah. Uh, Edwin Shabazian. Edwin Shabazian has improved tremendously. He came out right. He came out doing it perfectly. Timed it everything right. But uh, Fluffy, man, wow. That kid gets warmed up. He gets going and he sticks to the game. I mean, he that was a very, very entertaining fight. Extremely entertaining. I love the way Fluffy kept going up and down, up and down, going to the wrestling, stuck to the wrestling, go from one submission to another submission, Mr. Bobby just kept fighting one after another. He just got so tired from all the fighting. And and uh, Hernandez just seemed to get be getting stronger as the rounds went, you know. And, of course, then, then where they came to finish. But but uh, it, it, was a, it was a very entertaining fight back and forth. It was a good main event. It was a main event, like, that you, you expect from a main event. It was a, it was a, it was a good main, uh, semi-main event. And, and, you know, the good thing about a card like this is nobody expected fireworks. But it delivered fireworks. It delivered fireworks. It, the main event, you know, was, was really fun to watch. You know, uh, really fun to watch. And and and, and yeah, I knew it was going to be fun because uh, the the girl from San Diego, uh, man, she she she's a trooper, man. She comes and fights, you know, and 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 the world champ, former world champion jujitsu. I mean, yeah, jujitsu world champion. Um, why did I make you forget? I'm looking at you with sunglasses and I'm forgetting their damn names. And I know their names. Mackenzie names Dern really and well. Angela Hill. There you go, Mackenzie Dern. How did I, I forget? You. How did I forget their names? I'm looking at you with glasses. I go, what? What? I'm mesmerized by you. See, you're you're getting me all dizzy. I went, oh, uh, so I got it's a duck here, duck there, some guy. Yeah. So 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 Mackenzie Derns and Angela Hill. What a fight, uh, Angela Hill. Uh, unbelievable uh, resilience, you know, and, and kept fighting, staying in the game no matter what. She got hit by McKinsey Durns is like throwing leather, man. She's hitting him right down the pipe with some hard shots. And you would think that at the rate she was going in the earlier rounds that she was going to run out of gas, but nope. 
She didn't run out of gas. She kept the pace going. She kept going. She kept going. She she actually outstruck Angela Hill in the stand up, and she out hustled her. And, and Angela Hill fought fantastic, but fantastic only in the survival mode, not in the attacking mode. She was in survival mode the majority of the time. She did win one round. I believe she won the second round, uh, but after that, it was it was all Mackenzie Dern and and and. Man, uh, I think Mackenzie Dern, the more experience she's going to get, the better she's going to get because that girl can punch. She just doesn't put it all together properly just yet. But the way she was fighting and then utilizing her jujitsu, man, she's going to be very difficult to deal with. She's going to yeah. be very difficult to deal with. I would not be shocked if Mackenzie Dern's was in three, or, three fights or so as a world champion. I would not be shocked at all. And now she wants Rose, Thug Rose. And and you know what? That's a good gauge. That's a great gauge for her. The UFC uh, was entertaining that fight, which I think they should. And I think they are only because McKinsey called her out. I think that's a great, uh, great startup for either the next title shot after that or the number one spot after that, then a title shot. So if McKinsey can get by Thug uh, Rose, I think that... Uh, it's a great, great way to, to to go for a title shot after that. But I'm not, I'm not sure she can get by Thug. I'm just saying that's a good person to call out for yeah. the next spot being in the, the title shot. So that's a fantastic fight. I I, I would love to watch that fight because you know Rose ain't gonna be easy for nobody because she's a former champion for a reason, and, and Thug could easily become the champ again. So so that's in the right league, and that's what she asked for. And uh, let's hope the UFC gods can get that one to go because I'm definitely interested and I definitely will tune into that fight. Uh, to me, I find it very, very entertaining when the women fight because they give it their all. You know, some are not as skilled as others, but one thing you'll always get from the women is everything. They don't quit. They don't Passion. quit. You, you see a lot of men, a lot of men, you know damn well, because you watch. if you watch enough fighting, you see some men, they quit. They yeah. quit. They are out there and they just quit. Not the women. They don't quit. <laughs> maybe they don't get hit as hard or maybe this or that, but, but regardless whether they don't get hard or they get hit with baseball bats, because they keep coming. Because I'll tell you right now, Angela Hill got hit with baseball bats. You know, yeah. McKinsey Dern was hitting her with some straight shots on the middle. She hit her with a beautiful, beautiful knee. And man, uh, Angela Hill just took it. So even though Angela Hill's 38, and her record is what now fifteen and thirteen. Uh, you know she keeps improving. I wouldn't consider her by any means a gatekeeper. If people are thinking that, I would consider her uh, a still just one shot away from a, 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 another great opportunity. Because Angela Hill, she's, she's 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 got my respect. She's a warrior. She's a warrior. My huge respect for her. You've got a, another one of your fighters fighting here real soon in the uh, – it's the road to UFC uh, Shanghai quarterfinals. Mark Klamako. I call him Mini Pac. <laughs> My Mini Pac. Not because he looks like Pac, you know, not because he fights like Pac, though, because he's Filipino. So I don't know. Call me racist. I don't know. <laughs> I label him Mini Pac because he's short. You know, he's Filipino. And he's a badass. Fights, fights like Pacquiao. <laughs> no, he don't fight like Pacquiao. But he's a badass. Little Mark can do everything. He's been with us since he was 10 years old. He's been wanting to fight MMA. And listen, the the generation that's going to rule is like I've always said, it isn't going to be as much the college graduate, the college Olympian. No, it's those kids like Mark Kamako that can wrestle with the best wrestlers you know, they, they can do jiu-jitsu with the best jiu-jitsu guys. They can stand with the best strikers. They can do it all. That's Mark Lamaco. He, he um, I'm not going to be shocked. Actually, I expect him to win to the, the Asian uh, road to the UFC. I expect him to win it. We'll see. He's fighting next uh, Friday, right? Was it Friday or Saturday? Um, let's see, May 27th. So today is the 21st, six days from now. So it should be next Saturday, I guess. Saturday, he's fighting Saturday. I'm expecting him to win his fight, and I expect him to win the tournament. I really do expect him. I think he's so well rounded. He's one of the very few that's so well rounded, and I think he'll get into the UFC that route, which is a good way because the other route, 
Uh, he needed a couple more fights for the UFC to take him straight up inside, you know. But uh, this is his way to get into the UFC. He will get in. He will win that tournament, and he'll look fantastic uh, doing it. So I expect Mark Lamacco within the three fights to be into the UFC in the flyweight division. He, he, he's really good. They're going to be fighting out of the Performance uh, Institute in uh, Shanghai, China. Okay. okay. Interesting, huh? So it's kind yeah. of like kind of like what they do in, in Vegas, you know, when they do it at the Apex. Apex. Yeah. So it's their version of the Apex. Now, yeah. another, the, the other big, big news is uh, were you surprised <laughs> to see the deal that Nganu signed with the PFL, getting a piece of the company, getting his opponents $2 million a fight? I mean, that's competitive with the UFC. Very competitive. Uh, well... It actually blows doors on anything the UFC can offer any heavyweight. You know, they, they, if they offer you two million, they're not offering your opponent uh, two million or more. No, they don't do that. They might they be making like eight eighty thousand and eighty thousand. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But right? they're not going to offer your opponent two million guaranteed. Not going to happen. And I know this for a fact. I had heavyweight, so I know. Yeah. You know, my, my, but the champion may make two million or maybe two million plus, but the challenger sure as hell isn't going to make two million. Now, right. Ngano, I was told, now you tell me since you know more about it than I do, that Ngano's guaranteed $8 million? Uh, that didn't. They didn't get into that specific thing, but they gave him, he's on the board of directors for PFL Africa. Yeah. So much, so much talent coming out of there, so he's got a piece of that. And then, his, then his yeah. opponents can get, whoever fights him will be $2 million, and I think he's going to get the box, too. He, so, he basically, no, 100% get the box, and Tyson Fury is probably my pick, or Deontay Wilder. I'll take Tyson Fury all day long. I wouldn't take Wilder. It doesn't pay as much, you know. Yeah. And, and, and my opinion, <laughs> he ain't gonna win the boxing match. But, 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 but if you fight with MMA gloves, I want to watch. Yeah, because Ingano's got that kind of power uh, that I can see him taking these guys out if he hits them, you know. Yeah. So and he could take a shot too. So he ain't going to be exactly easy to take out, you know. So Ingano, uh, in 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 MMA gloves is very interesting to me. Ingano in in, in ten ounce boxing gloves, uh, interesting but not so interesting. Uh, I'm not as interested. I'm interested in watching him and and Tyson Fury. To be honest with you, I think it would because Tyson Fury said he'd box him with with MMA gloves. I'd like to see that because now you 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 went from. Now nah, you're probably gonna whoop his butt. To wait a minute, you might get knocked out because he's got the speed and he's got the power. And those little gloves, I'm sorry, they could potentially, they could, they could. I'm not saying it would. I wouldn't put my money on on on, on in Ghana, but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't scratch him out by any means, by any means, because Tyson Fury is one of the greatest boxer, heavyweight boxers of all time, and his record says it. You know, and if you don't believe it. Tough. His record says he is. You know, he's proven it. He's showing it. Um, the guy's full big time giant entertainer. I think what Ingano has done is he's he's kind of made a huge step in the right direction uh, yeah. for for better deals for more people to come out. PFL is is now they're like first they get Jake Paul, which I thought was a great move. Now they 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 leveled up even higher. You know, and then. Then they got another fighter that I know they used to train at my gym, uh, uh, Cedric Dumbe. Yeah. He's the baddest dude, man. This guy is a wrecking machine. He is a 170-pounder. He's one of the best all-time glory champions. And I'm going to tell you right now, anybody that fights him, <laughs> you, you got your hands full. This guy, he's not that tall. He's pretty strong. He kind of reminds me a little bit like a Tyson-type build, you know? Mm -hmm. He's not that tall, but he's powerful. He is powerful. And he's slick as hell, confident as hell, and he's 4-0 for a reason. And, and uh, yeah, no, PFL, they got a great signing in Cedric. Cedric, Cedric is a needle mover. Uh, and I don't know what they're going to do with it. Let's see. But they got they got uh, they got some great talent uh, in, in the last three. Those three are in particular are, are people I'd like to watch for darn sure. Yes, for sure. And um, the, yeah, no, good, good move. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. Um, I think one said he wanted twenty million dollars and uh, a piece of the company, like board of directors or something. 
Oh, okay. So it says, then it came to the point, Matt Hume working for Barco on a $20 million deal. And they literally went to the line tonight. <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, I don't know if any of that's true, right? Didn't Engano say that none of that's true? Well, uh, I don't know they, what he wanted, but I know what he got offered. I mean, I can read you the details. It says, yeah. after months of negotiating with a number of organizations, Engano sent a deal with PFL promotion announced Tuesday morning. And uh, Engano won't take part in the 2023 regular season, which already is halfway finished. Yeah. And like Jake Paul will instead compete with PFL pay-per-view super fight division. So he's going to be in a super fight division. Of the you know that's how they stack their pay per views. You got to get it started somehow, right? right. And uh, they're going to get a. He's probably going to get a good rip of that. Excited to announce the groundbreaking strategic partnership with Francis Ngannou, greatest heavyweight MMA fighter in the world. Uh, Peter Murray said in the statement, Ngannou will anchor. Uh, Jeez, uh, they already call him the greatest heavyweight of all time. The greatest one in the world right now. <laughs> no. No, no, I'm sorry. No, yeah, he didn't no, fight John no, Jones. Sorry, is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Until you fight John Jones, you're, I'm sorry, you're a great one, but you're not the greatest, right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I you know, <laughs> I gotta give that title to Jones, <laughs> I'm sorry. right? I mean, after yeah. how, how the quick work that Jones made of uh, Sarah Gone, yeah, he made it look Sarah like Gunn. patty cakes, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying. I'm not saying that that, that uh, Jones would beat Engano. I don't know, but you're not going to. You're not going to. There's no, a high no. likelihood that it could happen. A high likelihood that that uh, that Jones does to it to Engano what he did to Cyril. You know, because these they don't have a ground game. Jones has got everything: smarts, right. intelligence, and how to fight, work ethic. You know, determination, champion's mentality, champion heart. You know, champion, champion for, work over ethic. A decade you know, or yeah, he's never lost. He's never lost. He's never right. lost. He's never lost. I mean, you know, so you know, and I, I, I'm sorry. You know, the greatest, the greatest to me is, you know, he's you got to put him there, man. Until you beat Jones, you're not. You know, yeah. and, and uh, anybody else can say whatever they want, but I can say whatever I want too. Because this is our podcast, <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I give I, the, the the pound for pound ranking on the best heavyweight. I, I give to Jones, if not even potentially now the the pound for pound best of all time. On only the Javier because Mendez, of his uh, pound for pound scale, ladies and gentlemen. Javier yeah, Mendez weighs I, I, in I, I, on the fighting Joe. part. On the fighting part, the, on the other end, I give it to Habib because of what Habib does outside, and I don't know of anybody else that does as much good as Habib. So overall, Habib is like my. To me, Habib is like my Muhammad Ali. It's not what you did inside that counts as much as what you do outside, too. And Habib fits in that same category. Now, Habib had still been fighting. I don't know. I think everybody would, would call him the, the untouchable, you know, but he stopped. So we can't, we can't, we can't keep talking about that, right? What is, what is, what if, what if, what if, right, right. we can't do that. But, but I can definitely say that John Jones, you know, if someone says he's the greatest, then. Uh, from the fighting aspect, uh, yeah, yeah. How can you? How you know? He's done two divisions, and he made it look easy. Well, you know, here's the thing, right? You got um, there's a beef a couple of days ago, well, back and forth with Tyson Fury and John Jones, and uh, Tyson Fury said, "I'm not interested, man," because I'm not a cage fighter, mate. That's what he told the John Jones. Yeah, but before that, he was talking about about uh, doing whatever. I'll do this and that. When Cain Velasquez won the title, he was talking about fighting Cain in the cage, doing MMA. You know, he was talking like that. So, and all of a sudden, now that it's now it's coming for real fruition, you're not going to talk. Not fruition. What the frick did I just say? Fruition. 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 Yeah. Fruition is a. There, are fruition. There's the Mexican version of me. <laughs> this, is, this is the Mexican hobby of this podcast. Fruition. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I'm just saying. These guys chirp. These guys talk. It's all bullshit. It's all talk. But some of it's really good. It gets our attention. And back then, he was talking about fighting Cain Velasquez, MMA, blah, 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 blah. But it was all talk. It was all talk. He wasn't going to do it. It was all talk. So John Jones basically kind of kind of more or less put him in his place, if you want my opinion. Because John Jones never said, I'm going to box you to so come into my arena. Because he said it. John Jones has never said I'll box anybody. I've never heard John Jones talk about boxing anybody. Well, John Jones has stated 
in all aspects that I've ever heard in his interviews, it's always been MMA. And, and, and in all fairness, John Jones has done exactly what he said he was going to do. Well, you know, I mean, Hav, I could gladly challenge either one of those men in skiing because I grew up skiing for many years. So, you know, ski on the, on the mountains, on the Black Slopes, and the Alps, that'd be great. But you see, they've never done it before. So that's really the comparison, isn't it? You know, yeah. I mean, boxing and MMA. So everyone's waiting to see, well, MMA people can beat everything. And boxers are like, no, you can't. But have the boxers come over to MMA? Not too much. And those that have, they've tasted defeat for sure. James I mean, Stoney, first, Randy yeah. Couture. Randy Couture beat James Tony. That was the first time that was ever tested. This and and the- we all and we all thought, oh, you know, this and that. Even I had a little bit of doubt too. I, I thought James Tony was gonna get smashed, but there was a part of me that went, Well, if he lands, you know, and that's what we go through, right? But the more the more we get involved with MMA and the more these guys, these MMA fighters are, are getting in there with professional boxers, boxing only. Yeah, you start going. Well, okay, wait a minute. You're smoking crack. Like I give it for instance, my my guy Blagoy Ivanov. Do you really think Blagoy Ivanov doesn't get in the ring with professional fighters that have 20, 30 professional boxing matches? And do you really think he gets beat up? No, he does not. He does. He doesn't. Sometimes he kicks their ass, and sometimes he maybe doesn't get the best beat. They no one beats him up. I've seen. I've been there in Las Vegas. Blagoy never. I've never seen him getting beat up in boxing. I've seen him box 12 and 0, 14 and 0 guys, you know, and then I've seen him box other guys that have a lot of experience and he gets the better of them. So Blagor Ivanov is no joke in boxing. So you can't tell me that that these MMA guys can't box. So they can. But I don't see boxers trying MMA. So yes, I can't tell you most boxers can't do MMA because they don't do it. They don't do yeah. it unless they play with it, unless they're out there doing jujitsu or doing wrestling, or they have wrestled, you know, in high school or, or or college. Then okay, that's different. But if they don't, they've never done it. Don't be thinking you can come into the MMA arena because you can't. But you can definitely, definitely, hundred hundred million percent expect an MMA guy to come into your arena and do well. Okay, perfect example: Frank Mir. What did Frank Mir do when he went and boxed? Just boxing. And remember the boxer he did? Who was the boxer? It was a, a famous guy. Uh, and, and Frank Muir barely lost. Barely lost in yeah. a boxing match. Boxing only. And, and Frank, Frank Muir was, was, a, was a grappler primarily. Yeah, primarily a, a, a grappler. But yeah. Frank Muir held his own. Held his own and did good one or two rounds. I think he, he might have won one or two rounds. So, you know, that debate about boxer versus MMA, get the hell out of here with that. That ain't going to work. That ain't going to fly. You know, that ain't going to fly. Everyone's trying to catch up to the answer, the, the, the finite answer. Will the shark beat the alligator or vice versa? We got to find out. So we oh, see like a video of the sleeping yeah. alligator, the shark gets it. Yeah. Sleeping shark, the alligator gets it. That's that's the rule. Yeah. And, and, and look and how things are so different. Okay, let me give an example. Bare knuckle fighting. Yeah. Bare knuckle fighting. You got some, you got some badass boxers coming in bare knuckle fighting. They're not as good in bare knuckle fighting as they were in boxing. It's a different set of rules, even though it's hands only. It's still different, you know. You you can be great in boxing, but you're not going to be as great in bare knuckle fighting unless you're made for it. Bare knuckle fighting is not boxing either. There's a slight difference there, and and and, and you don't have the the luxury of of ten pounds gloves. You have the luxury of a fist. <laughs> and that's right. it. So covering up with, with, with your fist on your head is not the same as with a, a 10 ounce glove. You can absorb that. And the punch coming at you is, you know, you can absorb that more or less too. But try having a bare knuckle up to your face, see what happens. You know, a whole different story. Rip your it's a whole right different ball game. I myself personally don't care for bare knuckle fighting, but but I'm yeah. not gonna I can't I'm not gonna discount how bad it is. It's badass. You know, those guys yeah. are badass to go out there and do their bare knuckle. They are they are some serious killers there, you know, and, and you have to respect the sport, you know. You have to. I respect it. I, you know, I don't like it because the guys are getting paid all that money to get their faces destroyed, but I respect them because th- those are real warriors, man. Yeah, I think we found out that one doesn't equal the other. I mean, you know, Luke went and fought a guy that didn't do great in the UFC, but he's the king of – uh bare knuckle boxing now now these days he gave him a he gave him more than he could handle 
I don't know, is he two or three and oh or something like that in bare knuckle or what something like that? Maybe, maybe more. I, I get I'd have to check, but I mean he just walked in there and he's just pounding people out like no biggie. That's his speed. That's where he yeah. if it, if it's like if he doesn't have to worry about your takedown, your you know, question mark kick, you know what I mean? If he doesn't have to worry about those weapons and it's just swinging swinging haymakers around with no no gloves on. But he's good at that, but he's not well, good at he, the other part, right? Yeah, he's good, you know, and, and probably in boxing, he's probably not as good in boxing, boxing. The bare right, knuckle, right. bare knuckled, right up his alley, you know, and good for him. I I, I enjoy his conversations. I enjoy his interviews. I, I even enjoyed that one uh, uh, video that's out there with him beating somebody up on, 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 on a, at a nightclub that, that uh, I mean, he was in the right, too. He was in the right. He wasn't not in the wrong. He knocked the guy out. The guy tried to come at him. He's like, hey, stay away from you. Boom! Knocked the old man out. Like, uh-oh. <laughs> That's and the he thing. Stood there. He stood there, too. Like, hey, man. And police came. What are they going to do to him? He did nothing wrong. He told the guy, stay away, stay away. Bop! You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, you, you can't just think you can come in with a guy, especially a guy that's telling you who's a real fighter, and that guy's a real fighter, tells you, stay away. Keep your distance. You want to talk crap to him then keep at a distance talking crap to him don't approach him don't be within his you know i i fear for my life stage because that's 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 war that's it it's free war you know don't if i'm going to talk to you you and i are talking and we're at a distance and i don't really want to fight you but i want to talk bad mouth to you I'll, I'll keep my distance and if you come to me i'll back up and i'll talk shit to you again but i ain't gonna get close because as soon as i get close you can swing at me Legally, you can swing at me, and I, I can't do nothing about it. But if I'm at a distance cussing you out, and I'm not threatening you, but I'm cussing you out, and I say, yeah, 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 whatever, but every time you come forward, I take a step back, I'm probably going to be the one that won't get in trouble, or you'll be the one getting in trouble, especially if you came forward, and I kept backing up. Was there ever a time, I mean, you've been in the fight business forever. You just made me think of that. that you've had guys getting in trouble, like civilian fights, people trying to test them when they're just out on the town all the time. Where you were just like there was like was there ever like a, a couple of months or a year you're like geez is this ever going to stop these guys are wild animals like no you know, I've been lucky enough to to not be involved in that um, the only time when I was a champion way back in the day 1994 uh, 95 when I was a world champion kickboxer mm -hmm. I had some friends that I went out to a nightclub and and I overheard them you know say hey don't worry we got Hob with us if something comes down. First thing in my mind, I said, okay, these guys, they're already talking like they're going to be idiots. The first person they weren't going to have defend them is me because right. that meant they started it. And there's no way I'm coming in on that. No way am I coming in. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be subjected to you think you're, you're going to be a dumbass because you think you got protection. Well, I didn't say nothing to them, but if they, they, if they would have gotten in trouble, they were going to be on their own because there's no way. I didn't know these guys. I'm not going to defend somebody who went out and started for trouble. Forget it. I don't care. You know, right. you start trouble, you defend yourself. You're you know, looking I, for I'm it. not involved. Yeah, you're looking for it. You know, it's just like uh, if you watch the, the Nate Diaz situation, just from the little short clips I see, you know, from where what he, it where appears. Where he took the guy out in Louisiana. Where he took the guy out. From what it appears, from the little bit I see, the other guy's hands were up. The other guy was kind of approaching him. So I think the other guy got in his face. You know, I don't think Nate came to him. I think the other guy got in his face. I think Nate just choked his ass out. And then, but the problem I think is when he let him drop. That's probably when you know. But at the same time, too, when the guy went limp, sometimes it's kind of hard to hold on to the guy. You know, if he knew the guy was unconscious, right? Uh, if Nate would have held on even longer, it could have been way worse. So I think Nate letting them down like that is probably the best, safest route for Nate. Yeah, I mean, because... where, where where is there a rule like? When attacked by a mugger, one must slowly, gently lay him down at a forty-five degree angle. At That's the same time, out. yeah. <laughs> at the same time, you lay him down slowly. Someone hits you from the side, or someone stabs you from the side because you weren't aware of that. So, I mean, what's a, what's an individual like Nate Diaz supposed to do? He did the right thing in my book. From from what I see, he didn't do anything wrong. He did it all right. He, he choked the guy out. He didn't hold the choke. He let the guy down. But he didn't let the guy gently down because if he'd done that, he was subject to being attacked again. Who did, how did he know who was going to be on the other side? How did he know who else might have been looking to get him? How did he know there was a knife or a gun or something? He didn't know any of that. So what he did, 
in my opinion, is what you should have done and what is probably should be taught in uh, self-defense training, what exactly what he did, exactly what he did. You know, um, obviously, you know, the mouthy mouth part, no, because Nate has, he has a way of talking back to people. Now, that's what I don't agree on. But as far as what I've seen from the video is self-defense. You know what? I, I hung out with him a bit years ago. He was at some events and some parties I went to like over a decade ago. Well, long ago. And um, he was never a bully or starting anything. I never saw that side. He seemed like a chill guy. I think I think a lot of those times, a lot of people are looking to start beef with him. Not all the yeah. time, but I mean, you know, some things. I mean, uh, I don't, I don't know him as that. I know him as starting beef with other fighters. Yeah. Oh, like you're, 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 you started with Habib yeah. and them one night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, but they're fighters. That's that's their thing. Who cares? You know. I, I don't see him starting a fight with coaches. You know, he never started a fight with me. He never even gave me two cents. You know, nothing. You know, but yeah. fighters, they they they're they're open game. You know, they're, they're that's what they do. They fight each other. I don't. That's their business. I have zero problem with that guy. You know, um, I respect him, and and uh, he's, he's a needle mover for for darn sure. You know, but yeah, I have no problem with him. Did you see the uh, the press conference? Him and uh, Jake Paul look kind of lackluster. Like, yeah, whatever. I see. He's like, yeah. I, I, see ah. Nate, I, see, I see Nate Diaz get up and leave, and Jake Paul going, I can't believe he just went up and left. Oh, he just went to the bathroom. We'll be back. I, don't, I didn't see I didn't see more than that. I just saw uh, Jake Paul goes, I can't believe he just went up and left. And I'm sure Nate Diaz was probably like, oh, fuck you. I'm done with you. <laughs> but the hot point was, the hot point was somebody was like, yeah, man. Is your brother going to do this? Because I think I could whip his ass or something stupid he said to Nate about Nick. And it's like I'm a guy posing as a reporter that th is a fighter trying to, you know. Trying to get, uh, yeah, get trying the to, publicity. Trying to, trying to get some credibility or something. He's like, dude, don't you know my people are here watching you right now? He goes, my, all my boys are here. You're talking smack? What are you, stupid? You know what I mean? <laughs> like... <laughs> Honestly speaking, he's probably right because his boys are there. His boys, uh, they are, they are, they are loyal to the bone. So, so yeah. you talk like that, you might have to answer to one of those guys. So, hey, the way I look at it, you don't show them respect. They're not going to show you respect. And if they don't show you respect, then you either, A, stand up for the respect or get the F out of there. <laughs> you got, those are your two choices. Stand up for your respect or get the hell out. I mean, you know, if you if you show disrespect blatantly to someone like the Diaz brothers, who, you know, they're cool until you pull that trigger on them, and all of a sudden, uh oh, that's not your reality anymore. Oh, the world just got real on you. Oh, oh, wait a second. And I think you know we're living in a time where people are like, oh, I've got a camera, I'll film you, I'll sue you. Some people are still living in the 1980s, and they'll throw down on your ass. <laughs> that's that's where people don't. They well, like, they, they think they could just say stuff like it's they're you, making a tweet. They well, they, yeah. Reality and tweeting at somebody. They don't you know can't, Yeah, you can't do things with people like him like that. That's like that. They're just not uh, right. They're, they're not wired that way. and They don't care if you're in the wrong. You're in the wrong. You step on their their foot. They're not going to go out. Please let go of my foot. <laughs> like they, it comes a right cross. There comes a shin kick. <laughs> there's a choke coming your way. Uh, you know, uh, but hey. If they were super, super bad guys, they'd be in prison. Why ain't they in prison? Exactly. They're not They're not a gang. They're just a group of fighters, and they come from the tough part of the streets, and people yeah. don't mess with people. If you yeah. don't back it up, then you get messed with, and so forth. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's it just is. the way it is. Yeah, no, no biggie. That's just the way it is. I, I have zero problem with those guys. I know they have problems with my guys, but I don't have problems with them. You know? they, they've never come to AKA? No, no. Uh, uh, Jake and Gilbert, yeah, of course. Jake and yeah. Gilbert used to be with us for many, many years. Yeah. 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 I mean, last time I saw Nick, Nick, <laughs> hello. What's up? Nick's, Nick's cool. You know, Nate, 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 mm, he'll say hello. He has zero problems with me. You know, I have no problems with him. You know, but, but yeah, he has problems with some of my other guys, of course. You know, they're still, yeah. they're still, they're potentially, uh, uh, anybody that's a potential, uh, 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 potential you know, match. Yeah, 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 he's not going to be cool with. <laughs> That's just the way they are. If you're not a, if you're, you know, if you're never going to be a match, they're cool as hell. But if you're going to be a potential match, okay, they, 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 you know, that's still, that's just the way they are. That's the way some people are. You just got to accept it. 
It's it's funny. I mean, talking about boxing. So there was this fighter, the gym story I can sell it because he doesn't fight in UFC anymore. <clears throat> um, there's Alessio Sicara. He was from uh, Italy. Yeah, of course. Right? Sicara, he had yeah, done yeah. boxing. Good, good he, boxer, yeah. He, he was going to be a great boxer, and he was going to screw everybody up. And I was talking to, to Nick one day, and I go, yeah, dude, here, watch out. That dude's like a boxer, dude. He's like, oh, he's like, man, I put him in there with my 20-year-old brother, and he didn't stand a chance. And he's talking about Nate. When oh, Nate yeah, was 20 yeah. years old. So we're talking like over a decade ago. Nate was able to okay. already, already yeah, 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 lay yeah, down yeah, the yeah, boxing. Yeah, okay. But uh, but understand this, okay? He's yeah. no ordinary 20-year-old, okay? He's not. These guys, look, listen, man. These two guys, these two brothers were made sparring partners for Andre Ward. And Andre Ward is one of the few greats that retired undefeated. 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 Andre Ward was one of the great ones, you know. So these guys were regular sparring partners of Andre Ward. So don't go telling me crap this and that. You can talk smack against guys that are regular sparring partners of one of the greatest middleweights, okay, go ahead. <laughs> but don't think these guys can't box. They can box. And, yeah. And, you know, if they couldn't box, they sure as hell wouldn't be sparring Andre Ward on a regular basis. And I know this for a fact because... The, Undefeated you know, world champion. Here. Not YouTube what? star. No. Not not not, not no. a, a end-of-the-rope uh, MMA fighter that had a little boxing here and there but never really did it, you know? No, a real, a real freaking one of the greatest, you know. Look him up, Andre Ward, you know. He's one know of the greatest boxers, yeah. So Andre used to have Nate and Nick as sparring partners, and not one time on a regular basis. So that's how much of a badass these Diaz brothers are. Yeah, and that's funny. It's like, I was like, really? Because <laughs> I just thought they were jujitsu fighters. Uh-uh. And, I mean, Nate was uh-uh. only 20. And, and remember, their, their boxing coach, uh, uh, Flo- Richard, right? The Rich Flores? What's his name? Flores. Rich Flores, I think. Uh, I don't know. The gray-haired guy. Have you he's ever a, met him? No. He's a good boxing coach. Yeah. You know, I thought it was Richard. Huh? I'll, I'll look for him. Nah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But he's a good boxing coach. So, anyways. All right. We're done, right? We've got, we got everything. What's new? What's left? Uh, let's see. Jake Paul hires new head coach ahead of Nate Diaz fight. I didn't know that. New coach? So that means, uh, 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 BJ is no longer his coach. Yeah. I don't know. Former head coach BJ will remain on the team as a consultant, but he's hiring, um, changed to his camp and he reunited with Shane Mosley as his head coach. Uh, Ooh, the BJ still there, but Shane Mosley, huh? What do you think about that? My opinion is, I don't know. Uh, you can hire anybody; it doesn't matter. It, it's it's kind of hard when you start changing what's been working. And BJ, I know this for a fact. When when he, he had BJ had uh, uh, Jacob Chavez with him, as and Jacob was with him on every decision making with him and Jake, uh, him and BJ, they would always talk to me. And uh, basically, he was winning. He won every one of those. And as soon as Jacob Chavez was lost from the equation, he has his first legit loss. I, mean, I didn't see the fight at all, so I don't know how close it was or how close it wasn't. I just know he lost. Now you get rid of BJ and you bring somebody else in who's giving you a new set of rules. I don't know what to think because I, I, I just know that, that it wasn't broken. Why, why, why fix it? And when you try to fix it, you got rid of one of the elements that you know was, was actually important. You know, I thought I, that's I, my opinion. Okay, now I'm not saying I'm right, but now BJ's no longer the head coach. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying. Think, what I about do an that. MMA? How often does that work when you see a guy changing coaches every other fight or every couple fights? Not too often does it work. Uh, normally, normally the the result is doesn't work. Normally, yeah. normally. I'm not saying it won't. But normally it doesn't work. Uh, usually success comes from, you know, what you've been doing before. As long as it's not broken, why fix it? Um, there's been situations where, like, Henry Segudo, he comes in and he did fix things. So so it can happen. It can. It can. Wei Lee, too. Wei Lee came in, did some training with Henry, and then whatever, her, her own thing. But so it can, it can happen. It can. 
but I'm just not sure. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's not a good move, but I don't know. I don't know. But last question. You get all the, you have Dagestan at your gym. You get, is Umar visiting? He's training there right this week. U Umar, Umar just showed up. Uh, uh, we're going to start training. Uh, uh, we started training already. So yeah, Umar and then Abu Bakar has got his next fight next week. So I'll be in Las Vegas for June 3rd with Abu Bakar. Uh, he's fine. Uh, Bilal Muhammad's going to come uh, this week. I guess not 100%, but I think Bilal's coming to to spar with, uh, you know, last week, give good work with uh, with Abu Bakar. Abu Bakar is a badass. You know, he is yeah. freaking, he's a really good striker. <clears throat> he's well-rounded. He's good everywhere. So people that don't know Abu Bakar, you know, He's really good, really good, really good fighter. So he's a guy that always has had that huge room for improvement. And now he's starting to catch up to it. He's catching up. He's catching up to, to his full potential. And um, let's see how this fight goes. He's got a very tough uh, task in front of him. But uh, if he does everything correctly, he should come out victorious. And from there, he'll probably get a really top, top 10 opponent, I think. And uh, is your PFL – is um... – Anybody fighting in the PFL this next week or two? I had Moblid. Uh, Moblid was going to come down, but something happened. They went to Turkey, and Turkey sent them black because there's some war type of elections or something. So Moblid's going to be doing most of his training at home. And Gaji, too. Gaji's going to be training at home in, in Dagestan, and they're going to go to the fights. So I, I will not be in their corners. I don't like working corners unless I work with them. So yeah. everybody knows that. So if I don't get a chance to mm -hmm. work with them, I don't really like being in their corners. I don't. I don't I've never. I've always been that way. I don't. I don't uh, you don't like to come yeah. in on on the end of someone else's work. No, and, and I don't. not have the the tuning, the communication. No, the no, because plan, I don't right? know what they're doing. I don't know if there's injuries. I don't know anything. I, I like. I like. You know, I don't mind being involved with three or four of the people helping me. But if I'm not involved at all, I don't really like showing up in the corner. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully Habib gets you some more coffee cards this week, and uh, you enjoy more Starbucks. That's all I can say. No, he, I got enough from this one card he gave me for a lot of coffee. You know, <laughs> he hooked me up big time. I'm I'm set for quite a while. I don't think I, I don't think I the way I go to Starbucks, it'll take me over a year to use it. Yeah, you'd yeah. have to take the whole team out a bunch of times throughout the year, probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. You have a great week training with All you right. guys. And uh, we'll talk more, man. Another okay, good podcast man. in the books. Okay.